we want to do the lab on work and energy and this is going to have a lot of new things in it so I'm going to just pretty much show you how to do the experiment but I'm not going to show you anything on the computer with Data Studio. It's just not going to be possible and you can't really see those anyway. So let's look at the first investigation. What we're going to do is to use a spring scale to measure mass. That's the easy, easiest possible way. And uh, you can zero the spring scale by pulling this right here in and out. You can just look at it, make sure it's zero. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and set this up. You want to set up the two meter track to be at a 10 degree angle. Okay, I've already have the rod set up and I have it pretty close. And uh, you want to set this up like this. And notice that I have uh, wh where the uh, feet are here so that this way it won't slide back down. The other thing you want to do is make sure that it's resting on the feet. Uh, you may not even be able to allow the motion detector. You don't want this to be up here and have this resting down on the table. Okay, now we have at the end here an angle indicator. And notice that all I have to do is to simply unscrew this and move this up and down and you can see the angle changes. For this one you want it to be about 10 degrees. 10 degrees is a lot higher than you think it is. And by the way it doesn't have to be exactly 10 degrees. Just go ahead and set it close to 10 degrees. Come over here and measure it. Right now, you know, I'm pretty, I'd say it's oh, 0.9.9 .9 something, really close to 10, but just write down exactly what it is. Okay, now what we're going to do in this experiment is we're going to pull up the mass, and we're going to, in order to get a larger force, we're going to go ahead and add some of these half kilogram masses. So remember, as before, you have to mass them with the digital scale, mass this, mass this, and mass this. You can't do them all together because the scale doesn't go up that high. Go ahead and mass them, add the mass together, write it down in your in your book and now this is actually pretty heavy okay so the first thing we're going to do is to use the spring scale and I want to make sure that it's level when it's in this position I mean that it's zero and it's pretty close hook it around here Oops, I got to get it in there okay and now what I'm going to do and I'm going to have trouble standing so you can see is I want to pull this at a constant speed up the t up and I want the spring scale to be parallel to, to the meter stick. Okay, now, so this is about what you do, and somebody now will be over there reading that. That's a little bit over three newtons when I do that. Now you want to, and write that number down, then the next thing you want to do is to pull not parallel to the track, but pull at a 45 degree angle. Well, most of us have a little bit of trouble knowing, is that 45, is that 45? So we have this little triangle to help you do that. You know, one thing I can do is put it down here and make this parallel to the hypotenuse. See, it really is a pretty big angle. And now we do the same thing. We pull up at a constant speed and measure the force. Well, the force now is well over four newtons. Now the question is, why is it higher? Why is the force more when I'm at 45 degrees than when I pull parallel? Well, that's one of the things we want you to figure out in this part of the investigation. Now we want to determine the work with a constant force being applied. So how we're going to do this, we have the motion detector on the floor. Be sure you don't step on it. You have to use the extension cable to make that happen. And then I'm going to use the force probe with a hanging mass at the end of it. So this is how this works. So we're going to use the hanging mass on the end of the force probe and lift it up. But in order for the motion detector to see this, we're going to put an index card on the uh, on the mass. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you how to do that. Uh, you should have masking tape on your on your uh, table. You just tear off a piece of masking tape the way I do it and I just make a little loop here so it's double sticky and then I try to put the masking tape right in the middle of the index card. So one side is, is sticking to the index card and the other side is going to stick to the hanging mass like so and hopefully if I've done this right the index card will be level. You don't, you don't really know until you, you hook it onto the force probe. If the index card is bent over like so then you'll need to reattach it. Okay, so this is how you're going to do this experiment. Okay, now remember that you have to tear it with nothing on here. So I'm going to tear, you don't want to tear it like this or tear it like that. You want to tear it in exactly the same position that it's going to be in. So I, I, I tear it, I've zeroed the force probe and now I hook it on the force probe and I want to start with this about 20 centimeters away and then somebody starts taking data and then I want to lift this up at a constant speed 
about one meter and I want to come straight up and then you stop taking the data okay so what you've done is you have gone a distance so the motion detector is going to determine the distance and then you have measured the force and you may have to do this a couple of times to get the force to be fairly constant and you, you multiply the force times the distance and you determine the work and this is how you do it should be fairly straightforward and actually in data studio you will determine the work a couple of ways there's actually a neat way to do it using the area function now we want to measure the work with a non-constant force well what are we going to use for a changing force well the spring force that I have set up is a good way to do that but now there's some setup here so one of the things that we've done is we have mounted the force probe on the rod and it's, remember it just sort of slides right in here except right now we have it uh, I've already have it in, in place it just goes right on here and one of the things you, you notice that I've done is hmm, I've already had this set up so I'm going to have to move it to get it back in place uh, and come down again this thing when you start pulling on it I have moved the force probe as close as I can to this because if I put the force probe out here sometimes this rotates okay so now I have this in the right position I have uh, in fact I probably need to move it out just a little bit to get it in the center and what we're basically going to do in the, in the experiment is we're going to pull this back the force probe is going to measure the force and the motion detector which I have down here at the other end is going to measure the distance okay and I want to make sure I don't have my hand in the way so I'm going to, I'm going to hold the, the cart here and pull it back and, and we're going to measure the distance and the force okay so now I need to tear the force probe and by the way make sure the tear button is up instead of down if, if it is you'll notice it and you also probably want to maybe just take off the spring to tear it Okay, I've done that. You don't want the spring to be on there to mess it up. Now you uh, start taking data, and now you just want to slowly pull it, and you want to go out about a meter or so, and now have your partner stop the data and then come back slowly. That's it. Then you go in with Data Studio, and you measure the force times the distance, and you integrate underneath the area to find out how much work you've done.